Machinations have just rolled out the biggest update we've ever done. And I'm gonna take a couple of minutes just to walk you through the new interface and show you how you can use these features inside your simulations. My name's Matthew and I'm the evangelist for Machinations and I'm gonna be your guide on this journey with us today. Let's dive straight in. As you can see, we've done a complete update of the overall application, and this includes a new powerful bar down the left-hand side where we can control a lot of these new features. Let's see the star of the show first. Let's have a look at our new custom variables. This has been something that we've been wanting to overhaul for quite some time, and it's been the top most requested item that we update. So this takes what used to be our global variables, where there were just four that you could have, to a new really powerful set of tools that you can use inside your simulations. We've got four different types of custom variables, and I'm gonna go through each of these in turn and show you how you can use them inside your simulations. Up first, let's have a look at randomness. So I'm gonna create a new custom variable for randomness. I'm gonna give this one the name uniform, and I then have two options, either an interval or an array. I'm gonna go ahead and pick interval this time and choose the numbers I want to have in my uniform interval. I then have the choice here of either having uniform or Gaussian, and I can either update this on each play, which means it'll update once, it'll pick that number but in that range, and it'll keep that number throughout the simulation, or we can have it update each step. I'm gonna pick each step, and then I'm gonna hit save. Once I've hit save, I can then use this new variable in any of my model, uh here i've added it onto a resource connection so that when i hit play it's now going to pick a number based on my property of my custom variables as you can see here i've got two little constructions set up one's gaussian and one is uniform when i have the uniform property selected it's going to pick any one of the numbers within that range when i'm using gaussian it's going to create that bell curve for me and add preference to the numbers in the middle of the range rather than at the ends of the range, just as you'd expect from any Gaussian distribution. Now let's talk about the new maths expression. In this model, I've been using a pool with a value in to control which persona is being used in this simulation. By adjusting this one number, I can control all of the variables that are impacted by the player persona type. This becomes quite cumbersome when I'm having to run these state connections all over the model to try and control all of the places where I want to use this value. Now, the custom variables, I can add a maths expression, give it the formula nine, and then I can give it a name. I can also add a description to it so I know what it's used for and what I need to do with it. Inside the formula box, I can use numbers, other custom variables that I've created, or also full maths.js functionality, so I can create formulas as complex as I need them to be. Now that I've saved my new custom variable, I can go ahead and use this anywhere I want to in the model. Here I'm gonna add it into a register. This is gonna cut down the clutter of my models and make it even easier for me to control the important variables that I need to within my simulations. Now let's talk about live data sources. In this model, I've got a regular workflow, which means I go in, I update the player numbers for each of the leagues, and I use that to forecast how many rewards we're gonna be giving away on a daily basis. Now, I'm gonna create a new J data source using JSON, but I want this to be available to other members of my team as well once I've created it. So here, rather than doing it directly in a diagram, I'm gonna do this inside the team. In order to create this, I'm going to select external JSON from my drop down, give this a name, and I'm going to give this the name League One, and I'm going to paste the URL into here. And then the path value into the next field. And once I hit save, this is now available for all of my teammates. I now have the option to either use this in the diagram or copy to this diagram. If I copy this variable into this diagram, it's going to create a brand new custom variable for me. If I use this in the diagram, it's gonna retain that connection. So if I go back and I make an update or I change the path or the variable in the future, it'll update it in all of the models where I'm using this. So I'm gonna use this in this diagram. Now, I'm gonna go into my model, update my resource connection with the value so that 
every time I come in, I can update my variable. This means I can constantly use live data directly inside my models, reducing the amount of workflow needed to get data into machinations. Now for the final custom variable that we have. Here's a typical AMM model that I recently created during one of our webinars. In here, I was showing how you can use a pool to create the Ethereum price as part of the simulation. But we want to go one step further and get live data into our models. This is where I'm now going to use our new live market feeds custom variable. I'm going to create a custom variable called ETH. I'm going to pick my market. At the moment, we have Binance and OpenSea, but we're going to be adding more all the time. And now I'm going to use ETH USD. I'm going to pick that ETH USD T price. And out of the drop down, I get lots of different options that I have of the different um, metrics available in the market. But I'm going to pick the latest price. Now, by hitting the refresh, this is updating in real time the latest last price from Ethereum to USD. Now that I've created my new custom variable on the Ethereum price, I can use this directly inside my model, inside the actual formula itself. So here, I'm just going to use that ETH custom variable. Get rid of the old one. And now I'm going to be able to simulate my token value based on the very latest ethereum price from the market now that we've created our beautiful models we might want to brighten them up and add some images to them to help explain our story or how these game mechanics might operate we've created an entirely new image gallery inside machinations you can populate this just by dragging and dropping images onto this once you've built up the images that you have you can drag these onto the canvas and you can then resize these to be whatever size you like this is fully Chesar approved because who wouldn't want a picture of your favorite diagram architect Chesar on any of your models. Now, as you probably already noticed, we've moved the layer section from the bottom right hand corner into this new left hand panel. Just as you could before, you can highlight a section, uh, either right click on the layer to say move to this layer, or you can right click on the canvas and say move to selected layer. One of the big differences that there are now with this is that you can now drop this down and see all of the objects that are inside each layer. As part of this change, we've also updated the location of our version history. This can now be found on that left hand side and it gives us a lot more granular control and visibility over all the different versions that we've had of our model. We can click on any of these to restore that and decide whether or not we want to go back to that version or if we want to cancel and stick with the version we already have. Now, when you open the chart at the bottom, it's also going to open up our history of our plays. From here, we can see all the batch plays we've already carried out, as well as any interactive plays. Simply by right-clicking on these, we can then decide what we're going to name it. And also, we can filter by the plays that our teammates have done in this model, or just the, the simulations that we've run. As well as moving the layers from the right hand side to the new left hand side control panel, we've moved the zoom functions up to the top right hand corner. As well as being able to zoom in and zoom out just as you could before, we also now have the ability to go full screen. This will mean it'll open up um, a full screen view of machinations, perfect for when you want to show off to your friends and colleagues the amazing models that you've built, as well as the fit to screen, which will take all of the models that you're looking at and fit it onto the screen. If you just have one object highlighted and you hit fit to screen, it'll center that one object in the middle of the screen for you. In the top right hand corner, over by the share button, we also now have this settings field. Here we can select which line style we'd like to use as default. You can put, choose between any of these and then just uh, tick the box to say remember that connection style. Now if you have a model that has a large number of decimal places in one of your registers, and you find it difficult to be able to read the values from this. This is really powerful where we can now reduce the number of decimal places shown. Um, those numbers are still there. We're only just rounding up to the nearest uh, number of digits that you want to see. Well, thank you very much for joining me today to walk through these exciting new features here at Machinations. Can't wait to see what models you create using these exciting new features. We're going to be hosting a webinar over the next couple of weeks where we'll be walking through each of these features in some more detail and showing you the workflows that you can implement straight away to improve your game designs and increase player enjoyment and player retention. Thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you again next time.